Big, big show on a Wednesday. Mark Ingram, usually with us on Tuesday, gets shut out last week, but he's out here to dish out some red cards, uh, potentially on the Rams player who pissed in Honda, his head coach, Sean McVay, uh, during the game. Does he deserve a red card? Hit us up at Up and Adam Show. Also, has anybody seen the slate of games this week? It is insane and loaded, so we're going to bring you the best reporters. BJ Kissel covering the Chiefs, Chris Perkins uh, on the Dolphins, and we, who am I missing? Who? Oh, yes, Brian Costello with the Jets. It all starts right now. headed your way, my way on Sunday. It all kicks off, of course, Thursday. Little AFC East action, the Patriots and the Bills. But then, holy mackerel. I mean, are we going to see round two of the thonged one out in Jacksonville taking on the Lions? That's a feisty, weird game. Trevor Lawrence, of course, doing great. You got Jets Vikings. You got, uh, I don't know, the Commanders Giants is a sneaky Great one. And then the oldest rivalry of all time, Packers-Bears. I mean, who wants to lose more? Uh, We have a loaded slate of games, week 13, that you're looking at. So we thought here on Up and Adams that today would be a perfect time to hit up the people who have the best information. Who is that? Local reporters, local media members in this league, in there with the inside scoop, with these guys day in, day out, to check out what's going on around the NFL. We also have Mark Ingram joining us a little bit later. Not great for the Saints, but I want to, are the Niners the best defense in the league? Will he say that? He got, they got shut out by the Niners. Are we going to see James Winston? Is he going to avoid that question again? So Mark Ingram is on the program. We're going to break down your playoff picture as only we can right here on the show with the brilliant producers that we have doing their thing. But we start with those brilliant reporters in the Meadowlands. Some serious quarterback Drama, which is always good for business for the New York Post. It's going on right now, so we bring in a legend, a beat writer for the New York Post. Brian Costello, how are you? I'm good, Kay. How you doing? Listen, never a dull moment out there, huh? <laughs> no, that's for sure. The Jets have kept us very busy. Uh, you know, you, you finally have a winning season to cover. You don't expect quarterback drama, but here we are. It's hit again, and uh, it's been, like you said, it's been very good for business <laughs> and good, good for our headline writers at the New York Post. Cause it's very true, and I could do it. I want to do a deep dive on those those headlines that pop out at four in the morning when I used to go to Good Morning Football and be like, "What's on the back pages?" But let's get into this matchup first. It's an, an insane one. Just taken on the Vikings. So before we get to that, uh, let's get into the Mike White of it all. Jets fans, they're all in. Sala. You know, he's trying to not get too excited and a little bit more reserved after the game Sunday. Um, Here was his assessment of White. Let's take a listen. He didn't need to be anybody but Mike White. We didn't need to turn into the greatest show on turf. We just needed, uh, we just wanted him to play within himself and play efficient. I thought he did that. 315 and three touchdowns, that was probably a little bit better than not the greatest show on turf. I mean, like, just what he was able to do and also in the elements. Um, Yeah, no, especially in the elements. It was, uh, um, like I said, he, he, he did, he, he, he made the easy look easy, and that's. Uh, uh, I thought he did a really good job with that. So, Give me some insight on Salah. Why is he being so reserved there? I mean, he was the greatest show on turf for the Jets. Yeah, I mean, Robert Sala is not going to be Rex Ryan, right? Who we had here with the Jets for a long time, and, and shout from the mountaintops about what they're going to do. He's talking to his team there, and he's trying to keep them level-headed and not get too excited. They have six games left. They're in a playoff push. They're a young team. I think Robert Sala is just trying to dial everyone back a little bit. Don't go overboard. He knows the Bears are not a good defense. And, you know, not to take anything away from what Mike White did, but he's going to have to do it against better defenses down the stretch. So I think Sal is just trying to stay on message there and and keep everything from, you know, going too crazy right now. But it was a near perfect performance. So it's is it fair to say it's Mike White's job to lose? Yeah, I think that's fair. I don't think Sal is going to say that. But this is this is Mike White's job now until he stumbles. Uh, the Jets have said, oh, they want to get Zach Wilson back in this season. Zach Wilson's not getting back on the field if Mike White continues to play like this and the Jets win games, right? They're 7-4. and four. They're in the middle of the playoff race. If They're trying to end a 12-year drought here, and that has hung over this franchise like a dark cloud for many years. Mm. They are in position to end that. There's no way they're changing quarterbacks unless they have to this season. So – Okay. Has the ship sailed on Zach Wilson? And then what do we do with him? We can't, we, we can say what we want. The struggles, all of it, not handling the podium well. But this team is 5-2 and two with him as their quarterback. 
Yeah, I don't think the ship has sailed. I think we'll see him again. Um, you know, he's under contract for next year. They could trade him, I guess, in the offseason. But, man, you're you're really not going to get what, you know, much value there in a trade. So I, I think he'll be back next year. I, I just – I question whether he'll be on the field this year unless there's an injury to Mike White. Um, I think I think they're going to be – you know, White's going to play pretty well and keep the job. But, you know, I don't think we've seen the end of Zach Wilson with the Jets. Uh, it's hard to say that right now. Uh, there's a long way to go before that happens. So there's a huge game this weekend in Minnesota. The, Jet, the Jets very much in it. They are, you know, fighting for a playoff spot, trying to hold on to one. And they make a statement against what's been an excellent uh, – they, they want to make a statement. So what is the biggest thing that you think that this team needs to improve upon to make said statement? I think approve upon, I think it's just really just stick to the formula that they've been using to win games. And that's been playing great defense, running the ball well, and taking care of the football quarterback. And when they've done those things, they've won games, even with Zach Wilson. The problem was he wasn't doing it much. I think this is a game where Mike White can do a lot again. The Vikings defense is the worst rated pass defense in the NFL. They play a lot of cover two. They're going to give him the underneath throws. That's what Mike White likes. When Mike White's going to be tested when someone try takes away that underneath stuff and makes him go deep. That's when that's the test for Mike White. I don't think the Vikings can do that. The Jets defense has been great this year, but this is a big test. Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, they've got a lot of weapons over there. Can this defense keep it going? Can they sustain what they've been doing against a good Vikings offense? That, to me, is the key this weekend. Brian, do you have faith? You've been there year in your mention, Rex Ryan. Like, those had to be fun years for you, right? And about that <laughs> fiasco, and then you had Bowles, who's obviously uh, quieter. Then you had the ghost in the mono with Sam Darnold. You've seen it all. Does this <laughs> team feel different? Because there's a difference of grabbing a playoff spot and contending for the AFC. Yeah, they're di they're different. I mean, they're they've gotten a lot of younger players who have arrived quickly. Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, the rookies. They had Elijah Vera Tucker, who's now hurt earlier in the season. They, they've got young guys who haven't been through all the nonsense with the Jets and all the drama that some of the stuff you just referenced. There's been a feeling here in past years when anything goes wrong. Oh, here we go again, and that didn't exist. Even the Jets, the Jets lost their first game to the Ravens. They lost two of their first three, and they didn't. They, they kind of had a different attitude about them that this wasn't the same team anymore, and it's carried through. So I, I do see a difference in this team. How far they can go in the playoffs, I'm not sure, but I, I think they can get there. Uh, Brian, I know you have a press conference to get to. Mr. Sala himself will be at the podium. Good luck with that. I'd like to know if you want to know what I'd like you to ask him. Tell him Kay says hi. Big fan. Okay. Uh, I want to know when is he bringing out the receipts? A lot of talk early this season <laughs> about Salah saying, I'm gonna, I have receipts for every yeah. doubt it. I mean, it's about time. When is he going to whip those out? I'd like to start <laughs> seeing some of those. Yeah, he's he, he does not like talking about that, Kay. He's kind of embarrassed by that whole thing and how bad, big a story that became. But for sure, like, you know, when they make the playoffs, if they make the playoffs, yeah. that's going to that is going to be one of the first questions asked is, are, all right, are you ready to bring out the receipts now? And, you know, he, he will have a, a very long CVS like receipt to uh, <laughs> show everyone because there was a lot of doubters, uh, me included. You included. Oh, you got to yeah. hide in the back row for that day whenever that <laughs> happens. All right. Brian Costello for The New York Post. We appreciate you. Enjoy the ride and enjoy that game. Meaningful game on both sides against the Vikings here in week 13. Let's head out to Kansas City. We have reported analyst, creator of Kansas City Sports Network, BJ Kissel. Long time no talk. Hey, how are you doing? It's I'm so good. Look, this slate of action this week is crazy. So let's get to it. They're going to Cincinnati, your Chiefs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I imagine with revenge very much on their minds. Bengals got them not once but twice last year, including the AFC Championship game comeback. So we haven't really seen a team have Casey's number like that during this Mahomes era. Why do you think the Bengals gave him so many problems last season? I mean, they made plays. I mean, you look at the the two games that the Chiefs played, the regular season and that playoff game. I mean, T. Higgins and Jamar, Jamar Chase looked like the greatest wide receiver in NFL history in one of those games. Had about 266 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, in those two games combined, I mean, that was 485 yards between T. Higgins and, and Jamar Chase. So when they given an opportunity, especially with those big bodies going out um, outside the numbers and making plays, uh, they took advantage of them. And especially in the playoff game, you would ask any of the Chiefs guys in that locker room, they felt like they had opportunities to make plays and they just didn't come through in those moments and you heard it after the game against the Rams this past Sunday when they were asked you know about that game they were kind of on to Cincinnati already this was a game that a lot of Chiefs fans I'm sure a lot of coaches and players had scheduled or circled uh, when the schedule came out for sure I know a lot of people thought that Mahomes might fall back down to earth 
after <laughs> losing Tyreek Hill. I don't know what that would look like. I don't know if I've ever seen him down to earth uh, as, a, as a starter in the National Football League. But uh, he's looking good with a rotating cast of characters at receivers. What is the, what is, at receiver, what is the biggest difference you've noticed in MBJ? I don't know if it's the difference. I think that a lot of people um, that hadn't had a chance to be around him, you get so enamored with the physical abilities, with the playmaking, with all the crazy things that he does that I don't think he was ever given enough credit for just the mental acuity that he has of playing the quarterback position. I've personally used the analogy, uh, baseball analogy of thrower versus pitcher, where a lot of people uh, just thought he was a thrower, didn't know necessarily how good he was at reading a defense because, uh, again, we get so caught up on the highlights. So I think his ability to spread the ball around, I heard a stat um, during the broadcast this past week that they're the second team in NFL history to have, I think, nine players wow. with at least 150 receiving yards through week 10. Uh, he is spreading the ball around. He's going to the right guys. Uh, and it's just that side of his game that probably never been, it was probably always there, just never given enough credit because we were all busy watching all the highlights all the time. And, you know, LaShawn McCoy was on my show a couple of weeks ago, and he very much talked to me about giving Andy Reid the credit, too. It's not just Mahomes. Mahomes is brilliant, of course, but what he's been able to do uh, with this team, without Tyreek Hill, with the confidence in spreading the ball. Now Mahomes yeah. has 29 touchdowns. He leads the league just under 3,600 yards on the season and counting. And then you look at this opponent for this week, these Bengals, they're without a star, too, that they're hoping to get back in Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon as well. Um, and the Chiefs have, have some have had some key pieces out as well. Kadarius Toney with the hammy, mm -hmm. McCall Hardman. He's been on IR, though I did see him tweeting that he's lifting weights, so we're rooting for him. <laughs> yeah. uh, any word we might see those guys come back? When Coach Reed was asked about it this week, he said Kadarius Tony is just day to day. It's something they don't want to rush him back um, with a soft tissue, you know, injury like that. And he's had uh, some things in the past with injury, especially with soft tissue things. So uh, I'm saying day to day, Coach Reed's not going to give a ton of information during the press conferences on injuries. And then for McCole Hardman, uh, it looks like week 15 would be the earliest he could come back. But yeah, I saw that tweet. Uh, it's good to see that he's out working out and uh, you know doing some things uh, physically to get ready to play. But he'll be out at least this week against the Bengals and next week against the Broncos and hopefully get him back but uh, like you said I mean Sky Moore uh, the rookie wide receiver has yeah. stepped up the last couple of weeks we see Justin Watson uh, making a lot of plays so far this season in some big moments so uh, it's a good opportunity for other guys to step up because you're going to need them uh, down the stretch but uh, yeah it'll be it'll be fun to see Kadarius Tony get back in there that was a fun uh, addition uh, to the Chiefs offense with Andy Reid I and wasn't hopefully excited get back about out it soon. I was like why are they getting Kadarius Tony would have and that's the brilliance of Andy <laughs> Reid right there in that first game he was incredible uh, Casey Sports Network how's it going give us a little plug where can we see all the stuff? Well, we have a phenomenal host named Matt Hamilton that does a weekly show uh, with former Chiefs quarterback Matt Castle. Yeah. They break down Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense every week. But yeah, it's just a, it's a platform for content creators that create, you know, content regarding Kansas City sports. We've got about 18 shows a week uh, on the Kansas City Chiefs. We cover the Royals, KU, K-State, and Mizzou. Uh, we just added a soccer show with all the World Cup, and we've got two professional soccer teams here in Kansas City. But our bread and butter is the Kansas City Chiefs. Got a number of former players that help us out. Derek Johnson, all-time leading tackler, comes on and breaks down the defense with us. And then Whoa. Mike uh, DeVito and Jeff Allen have a show as well. So a lot of different perspectives, ton of content. It's been a whole lot of fun uh, doing some cool stuff with uh, some good friends. Friends. You doing this is really inspiring. And you, you bet on yourself you. and you started something and look where it's gone in a short order. So congratulations on the success. Still waiting for Castle and Hamilton to invite me on their show. Haven't gotten <laughs> that one got lost in the mail. But BJ Kissel, you are a legend out there in KC. And if I took if I took a shot of whatever, any time that they show power and light during World Cup coverage on Fox, mm -hmm. I would be drunk in the middle of the game because they, <laughs> Kansas City's heartbeat is soccer, uh, so and football, of course, and baseball. So uh, great for you uh, owning those you know places and markets uh, out there. BJ Kissel, everybody with Kansas City Sports Network. Good luck against those Bengals. Not really. I want the Bengals to win. <laughs> But we'll see what happens, and we'll see about Joe Mixon and Jamar Chase. Ooh, that's going to be a tough game, and maybe a preview of the AFC Championship game. That's right, Bills, you heard me. Uh, and finally, and Miami fans, oh, no, I love the Dolphins. So we go to Miami where we have uh, Dolphins columnist for the Sun Sentinel, Chris Perkins. Nice to meet you. Hey, Kay, I'm coming to you from a hot, dark closet. So that, that, that's, that's my circumstances right here. Why are you in a hot, dark closet? 
this is the best place I could find out in the press room. It's, it's noisy. And uh, th this is it. So th this, this is where I am. We make do, okay? We, next location up. This is it. Next location up. I love it. Okay, well, let's get through this then. The Dolphins, and thank you for being so optimistic about that. We love having you on the show. Huge test uh, yeah. in Santa Clara against the Niners. There's cute storylines, of course, between them uh, with McDaniel and company. Now, it's a, it, it's a very exciting matchup between two of the best in the league, and it's a homecoming for your head coach and a chance to take on his mentor and Kyle Shanahan. What's been the message from Coach McDaniel at press conferences this week uh, on the other side of that hot door? <laughs> well, you know, Mike McDaniel, he's, he's such a funny guy. And, and all his press conferences, he's got this deadpan delivery. So the message this week to the media has been, this is not about me and Kyle Shanahan. We're not doing an Oklahoma drill out there. And he doesn't think people would pay for it, although I would pay hundreds of dollars to see Shanahan and McDaniel in an Oklahoma drill. But that's been his message is that this is not all about me and, and my background. This is about the Dolphins against the against the 49ers. And so, you know, we'll we'll see how this turns out. You know, it, it's gonna be tough because, you know, uh Mike McDaniel has had an association with Mike and Kyle Shanahan since mm -hmm. I guess maybe two thousand. 2005 or, wow. or something like that when he was a youngster uh, growing up and he was a ball boy for the Denver Broncos back back in the day and and uh, so he he comes up with these guys and he was working for Kyle the last five years run game coordinator offensive coordinator so that's been his big message but you know we all know that the bigger thing is Teron Armstead being gone at mm. left tackle and who's going to handle Nick Bosa so I, I guess McDaniel is right because this is more about Nick Bosa and who handles him. So who's handling it? Yeah. Who's handling Nick Bosa? Well, that, that's a good question. Now, they have some options. You know, Austin Jackson, the right tackle, has an ankle injury, but he's a left tackle. They could shift him over. They could use Brandon Shell, who played there last week. They could use Greg Little. So we'll find out a little bit more in practice today. My guess would be they use Brandon Shell there at, at uh, left tackle, and if Austin Jackson is healthy enough, he gets the start. But uh, we, we've got to see. There's, there's a lot of questions there because, as you know, Bosa can single-handedly wreck that passing game. There's protection questions there with Tua, his past concussion history. Mm -hmm. So uh, high stakes there of, of who plays left tackle for the, for the Dolphins. What's the biggest difference you've seen in Tua from last year to this year? I, I really, I think it's that he has a belief from a coach because he didn't always have that with Brian Flores last <laughs> season. So he's got belief from a coach. But then, you know, look, having Tyreek Hill helps, right? And having Jalen Waddle also helps. So, but, but you know, Tua has, has gotten confidence again. We're seeing the Alabama Tua right now. We <laughs> didn't see that the previous two seasons. Uh, we saw a guy who he said that there were times where he looked at himself in the mirror and said, am I good? Now he's got a system that highlights his skills. He's got talent around him, and he's got the faith from the organization and the coach. So that's the biggest thing with Tua. Uh, you know, before the season, there were questions about his deep throws and his decision making. Mm -hmm. He's done that. He's taken care of that. To a, to a reasonable extent, but the uh, confidence is the big thing. Yeah, and we've seen that. There's even just one clip this week going viral of McDaniel explaining how he and his staff have sort of helped rebuild the confidence. And we're seeing that Alabama, too, that you're talking about, the guy who's in the MVP conversation, the guy who leads the NFL in passer rating, uh, and the Dolphins are 8-0 and no in games in which he starts and he finishes. And there's you know, there's a question that people want to ask uh, that sit in my seat of, well, who, who deserves the most prey? Is it McDaniel? Is it Tyreek Hill? Is it too? Maybe it's everybody. Maybe it's Brady and Belichick, and that's why they won all those rings, and that's okay. And that actually is the, the biggest key to success. And they've got the the lack of uh, unhealthy ego to make it happen, where everybody takes credit and everybody helps build everyone down there. And that's why they, they're such a threat. Riddle me this: uh, if the fill in the blank rather, if the Dolphins are going to leave the Bay with a win, they need to what? Oh, they, they need to score. And, and and look, here's the thing that the Dolphins are coming off of a stretch where they've scored more than 30 points in four straight games. But, you know, th those opponents have not been impressive, right? It's been Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, Houston. And last week they defeat Houston 30 to, 30, 30 to 15, but they only scored two offensive touchdowns, one of which was set up when they got an uh, interception at the three-yard line, mm. so they only had to go three yards. They got a defensive touchdown, and they drove for one, but they, they didn't score in the second half, and they only scored two offensive touchdowns. So, really, 
is this offense at a place where they want it to be? Again, this five-game uh, winning streak, uh, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, Houston, nobody with, what, more than six wins, I believe it is. So uh, is this offense for real? Can they score against a good defense? It's well said, and uh, they got to get one here. And then you've got – it doesn't slow down. you got the Chargers, I believe. you got another one with the Patriots and Jets, of course, in uh, division. And then you have – there's another sca- – Bill. No, what do you have? The, yeah, you have the Buffalo. Bills. Yeah, Buffalo. Yeah. Ooh, leading the way in that AFC East, a fun little tilt that you guys have uh, for the rest of the season. We appreciate you, Chris Perkins, for the Sun Sentinel. Enjoy it. I don't know if you're making the trip out to, out to the Bay, but – but it'll be fireworks for sure on both sides. And big thanks to BJ Kissel and Brian Costello for joining us as well. Great information from the best of the beat. And up next, oh, man, this will be so fun. We're breaking down the playoff picture. Up and Adam show, Coachella style. Big turkey dog! Big dog, we brought it back, baby. Let's go! Yeah! yeah. Who that said to go beat them bangles? Yeah. There's some respect on that name. That's two wins in five days. That shows me, shows you right there, that we're right there. You want to do something special, guys? You can't be afraid to lose. We didn't sign up for you. We got it the hard way today. The hard way is our way, apparently. (laughs) I think we got a victory Friday coming up. Oh, the Jags and the Chargers getting wins. It makes my heart so happy. The Dolphins in the mix there as well. What a week 13 we have upon us last night or tomorrow night. No, tomorrow night. Yeah, we have a huge game in the AFC East between the Bills and the Patriots. And we are doing it all. It gets already week 13 and the race for the playoffs is well underway. We've got to break this down. Matt Hamilton, get on in here because you are my compass of the playoff picture. You always give me the best little nuggets. What else would happen if this ipso facto? Facto carried the one check the wind direction. You do the whole thing for me. And it's also a fun time of year. It's almost December. And there's this thing called Spotify Wrapped that everybody talks about. And it basically, Spotify spits out the music that you listen to the most, what songs, what artists. And everybody sort of roasts each other's personal musical preferences, which I really enjoy. And listen, I like Dolly Parton a lot. Back off, everybody. Uh, So there's a new thing this year called Make Your Own Coachella Lineup with Your Faves. It's a template. It's trending. Marissa came up with this awesome idea to join it with the playoff picture, but here is what we're talking about. It's the Rissy Minaj Fest. They spit this out based off of your musical preferences. I mean, what do you think, Hammy? I mean, the first thing that jumps out is to have a, a username based off of Nicki Minaj, and I noticed <laughs> Nicki Minaj is is not on the poster. No, no. So, and Drake followed by Elvis Presley is a, it just shows the range that Marissa has. It, she really does. I mean, J. Cole and Casey and the Sunshine Band, are they performing together? Who's who opening for who? What stage? Main stage side? I mean, Casey and the Sunshine Band, I'm obsessed. And Jungle making the list is hilarious because we played so much Jungle in August trying to figure out what the name of the show or what the song for the show was going to be and that's what we wanted this like retro thing so I know for a fact that's why that's on there so Marissa brought this to my attention and then I thought and she thought like we've got to make our own situation up and Adams playoff style Burrow and the Bengals Josh Allen wheeling and dealing the Niners coming in hot it is all music to these ears so these teams they're all playing in sweet sweet symphony right about now let's do it even though every spot isn't booked solid hammy there's a good chance that you'll see some of these teams perform in the postseason. So let's put it in the machine and spit it out. Yup, this is the AFC Playoff Picture Fest lineup. So, th- man, listen, I'm buying the VIP parking for this thing. This is amazing. <laughs> this, this would be a sweet, sweet gig. I would buy the advanced pre-sale tickets with the VIP package to this show right here. I'm paying the $18 beer with like the, the head of foam seven inches at the top. Fine. Here's the deal. You've got your AFC teams that deserve the top bill. They're selling out arenas. They're going on tour. They've made it to the main stage as headliners, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Miami Dolphins, Mac McDaniel in a Hawaiian shirt doing the hula. Absolutely, Tennessee Titans and Baltimore Ravens. The Chiefs, by the way, leading the way. They're the one seed at nine and two. All right, let's dissect this bad boy further. These acts are ready to hit the stage, but 
they're not getting like the premier time slots, right, as the sun is setting. No, 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 they're sweating bullets in the hot sun. They're the openers. The Buffalo Bills, you know, they're they're performing music while people are fighting, making out, trying to put their picnic, you know, blankets <laughs> out uh, where they need to be. These are the Buffalo Bills, the Bengals, and the New York Jets. And you love to see it, the AFC opening acts. Uh, the Bills and Bengals, by the way, can move up shortly. They're tied atop their respective divisions in wild card spots thanks to tiebreakers. And then finally, yep, this is when I show up for the warm-up DJs. I want I want to be there for the crowd getting going. They don't have merch yet. They're dreaming of just let's make enough money so we can make merch. They want to make the bright light marquee someday. These are your supporting acts. The New England Patriots, the Los Angeles Chargers. Hamilton, the AFC is alive and well. It really is. And and those are two good teams, those Patriots and Chargers, sitting on the outside of that playoff picture right now. Uh, they're they're both trying to fight for a yeah. wild card star- spot. So I want to start with the Patriots with you. What do you think needs to happen for us to see them ascend to that main stage or maybe one of those supporting acts? It's so funny because this is somebody, the Patriots are different. Like the Chargers are like Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga used to, in 2007, Lady Gaga's on the side stage. No no security, no whatever, she's doing her thing. And that's the Chargers, like, finally let them get, but the Patriots, like, they're Bruce Springsteen. They're Bruce Springsteen relegated to the side stage of some festival, it's super weird. So if they wanna go regain greatness, it's gotta start with a win tomorrow night. It is a must win at Gillette, Thursday night football kicking off week 13. This is their first of two meetings with the Bills. The schedule is Blech, going down the stretch for the Patriots. In addition to those two Bills games, Hammy, they got the Bengals, they got the Dolphins. The Dolphins have had their number, as we know. And two, I guess the easier games we want to talk about, that's the Cardinals and the Raiders, and those are both on the road. Yikes. I will say what gives me hope is what we have seen when I talked to Tom Curran about last night on Quick Slants up there in Boston. Mac Jones looks good. If you look at what he did the past two weeks even, I know it's a small sample size, He's been on a bit of a tear. He's completing over 77% of his passes. Listen, the girls are throwing their bras on the stage for Mac Jones. I'm telling you, he's ranking second in the league in yards over that span. So if he plays like this, he can get them in. He could put on a little, I watched the Elvis movie the other night. Listen, he can make a little something happen. He can move his hip and everybody starts swooning. Uh, But I mean, you tell me, legit, it's an uphill battle. Yeah, it's going to be hard, and they have to solve that Bills problem. You're right. And you look at the other quarterbacks in the AFC and the way they're playing right now, and really it's going to take an incredible effort from Mac Jones. Uh, but let's move to the Chargers now. Okay. I know it's an uphill battle for the Char- for the Patriots. Do you think the Chargers can find their way into this thing? Uh, I th- uh, between the two of them, the Chargers have the easier path. Look at what's going on here. They only play two playoff teams over their final six, and they are getting healthier. They're missing guys, right? So we've seen, listen, when Keenan Allen's out there, what he can do to make life easier for Justin Herbert is, uh, you know, that's music right there. He's posted two of his three highest passer ratings of the season over the two games with Keenan Allen back in the lineup. And we're seeing them come through clutch moments, too. Did two-point play. A brilliant decision executed, by the way, to perfection. That is Staley written all over it, and that is confidence in this team. We expected the Chargers to fade away when they got banged up. They always fade away when they get banged up, but guess what? They did not, and now they are getting healthy. It's week 13. They're getting healthy at the right time. So I do think we see LA go on a run, and I think Herbert does get to the playoffs for the first time in his young career. And he's got the hair for the main stage. He definitely does, and I, I just I love the way that they're playing right now. I think you're right. Keenan Allen has made such a huge impact on that team since coming back, and uh, you know a lot of people are taking shots at Herbert right now. I don't yeah. necessarily love that and think that's deserved with what he's played through and all the injuries that team has had. Uh, but it's all coming together right now, and I think this is this is a crucial a crucial stretch for that team going forward because. I think in in year three for Herbert, he's he's got to get into the playoffs. Didn't it, they just get reflexed? Didn't right they now. just get reflexed into Sunday night? They did. They did. So uh, I think there's big expectations from everybody for this. And that's who? Them and the Dolphins? Yes. Yep. Okay. And so. that's week four. Week fourteen. 
14, I believe, yeah. Well, I think it's the first time the Dolphins have been flexed into Sunday night since literally 2006 when I was at Lollapalooza getting drunk and playing chicken uh, in the lawn of Grant Park in Chicago. Uh, we're going to hit the NFC in a little bit. Hit us up. A uh, Great job by Marissa McBride on those graphics and the idea, but we've got Mark Ingram to get to. Listen, a guy hits Sean McVay cold in his jaw. Red card? Yeah, 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 I'm ready for war. I'm destined for greatness. I swear to my heart that I lead. I'm up on the scene. I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah, I'm ready for war. I'm ready for war tonight. I'm ready. The side of the score. The side of the score tonight. He's got a Heisman, now he's got a red and yellow card. He was with us every week, shining a bright light on our league, on our game, on our show. Uh, currently in his 12th NFL season, Saints superstar running back Mark Ingram, who is back on the field. Hey, K, K, what's up? K, hey, what's up? Hi. Always love, music video lit, the show always <laughs> popping. So I'm glad to be a part of it and come and tap in with you. How, thank you, and I appreciate that. How are you feeling, my friend? I'm feeling good. Um, it was felt good to get back out there on the field with my guys. Um, so the body's feeling good. And, uh, you know, got to keep it pushing. Now, you were supposed to be on our show yesterday. You did have a last-minute team meeting. Was that, was, that, was that team meeting really just tailgating for U.S. Iran and the World Cup match yesterday? Because I saw you tweeting throughout the game. Yeah, of course. No, but, <clears throat> you know, we have the Monday night. So everything on the schedule gets pushed back a got day. Got it. So... You know, today's players' day off. Tomorrow's like a Wednesday. Blase, blase. But, <laughs> you know, we had to definitely, you know, U.S., Iran, had to push the boys through. We had to get through the uh, group stage, get to the knockout stage, and uh, the boys did it. So, Are you all um, talking about that in the locker room? Like, how much, how much real estate is the World Cup getting? I mean, it's on every single morning in the training room. So if you're in the training room, it's on both TVs. In the locker room, it's on the TVs. Uh, guys are following it, and um, we're watching all the matches, but it's kind of special attention. It kind of gets – the crowd gets a little bit larger around the TVs when the U.S. is playing. So we're following the World Cup closely. Is there one one guy who's like, I know everything about soccer, he's the encyclopedia, and they're helping everybody? Who is that? <laughs> Everyone thinks that they know the most about <laughs> soccer. You know what I mean? So everyone's trying to drop their knowledge, drop their lingo, drop their soccer terminology, their football terminology. But it's called soccer. I love the chance that the U.S. is doing abroad. It's called soccer chance. I'm loving it. But um, do you just sit in the corner while everybody's doing that, and you're like, I own a team? <laughs> hey, I just sit back in the cut till you know until it's my time to shine. <laughs> uh, so I lo- I asked you how you're feeling because you must be feeling pretty good because you got back on the field on the pitch in the NFL, uh, which yeah. is exciting to see. You played for the first time after missing three games. How did you feel? You you, you had about four ca- you know four carries. You had a target out there. Let's talk about how you how, what's really going on. No, I felt good. Like I felt confident. Um, no hesitation. Um, just- you no, know, I felt good running the ball. You know, the opportunities were limited. You got to take advantage of your opportunities. You got to maximize your opportunities. And, um, you know, just continue to keep trying to do that. Mm. Each week in, week out, whenever my number's called, being prepared, being ready to roll, um, ready to make a play when my number's called. So I uh, feel good. Knee's feeling good. Body's feeling good. So we got to keep that keep that going. Yeah, and and so when are we going to see Jameis? Man, I don't know what to tell you, Kay. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, like. We're here. We working. You know, we uh, got Tampa coming up Monday night. Um, our division is trying to help us here. You know what I mean? Yes. Our division is trying to help us. So we have three division games in the last five. If you can't handle your division, you don't deserve to move forward. So it'll say a lot about the character and the resilience of our team. Ooh. And um, so we got three division games in the last five. And we essentially can't control our own destiny. We just got to continue to improve and get better and make the plays. People got to make the plays when their number is called. You know what I mean? Players win the games. and um, But when is Jameis' number going to be called? Because, listen, I, I'm, I like the narrative. Listen, like Kay, con- listen, Kay. I like the st- Listen, I'm just saying, division game against Tampa Bay, that seems to me like the perfect time. Revenge game. So, you know, that's where he started his career, taking number one overall. Big trust. Get him out there. Hey, Kay, I'm here on the show with you. <laughs> um, I'm not upstairs, you know, installing and doing the game planning. And choosing who the quarterback is, I'm down here, you know, popping popping my stuff with you. So, 
Well, we're happy. You know, I, I, can, yeah. I can't give you a, I can't give you a oh, solid oh, answer. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I just like to ask to see how you, how you tap dance. I like to see you dance. I'm, I'm going to finesse it this you're, week. Yeah, this week, a little this, a little that, a little that, a little, you start talking about you, you're going to start talking about God. It's like, I don't even know what you're going to do. Talk, God talking is about good, the word. God, 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 God is good. good. God, God is good. God is good. God is good. Uh, the shutout had to hurt, even though you were back out there. So there's good and bad to that, and the division is helping you out. Do you think the Niners have? Do the Niners have the best defense in the league? Listen, you have to give them credit. I mean, I I, I was unaware, but I think um, after we didn't score, I think what's that? Four shutouts in the second half for them, Oof. and um, content. I, I mean, four consecutive second half shutouts for them. I don't know, something like that. Whatever it is, they're not giving up a lot of points. Um, they're solid. They're well coached by an Alabama guy and D'Amico Ryan's. So a uh, road tide always and forever. We the greatest, no matter how you want to slice the cake. Um, so they're just well coached. They got great players, and um, they're 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 a tough group, man. So you got to give those guys credit, and um, they're doing they're doing a good job. Best defense in the league. Arguably. <laughs> Uh, Mark, are you going to be one of the players who, when you, when you, whenever you feel like it, decide to walk away? Are you going to tell what it really is? Or are you going to still, you know, like it's going to be tough. You have to make a decision. Like, are you going to still give the answers that are like, arguably, or are you going to say, say how you really feel at some point? You know what I'm saying? Are you excited for that at all? You know, it's yeah, you know, I'm always excited for, uh, you know, the future. The future always holds some excitement, but, um, <laughs> 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 I'm still, I'm still locked in. I'm still locked and loaded, man. I, I still got juice. I still got, I still got the yes. Ju ice, man. So, um, as long as I'm feeling good and I'm in a good place with good situation, um, you know, I'm gonna stay. I'm, gonna, I'm stay. I'm, gonna, I'm continuing to try to play football and prolong my career and continue to do this because I love it. Mm-hmm. Feel like I can still do it at the high level. And um, but whenever that moment does come to a close, whenever God closes that chapter of my life for me, you know, I will. Be on. I will call oh, it how know. it is. I will tell the truth. Yeah. And uh, but I'll do it my way. I'll do it my way. You know. Which we love to see. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I hope you don't take the hot takey route of doing it that we see. No, man. Like you know, the hot take, no. uh, the 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 bashing people, the hate. You know, the negativity. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily. I'm not necessarily a fan of all that that I see on TV a lot of the time. So, um, you know. Uh, we'll see. We don't want to see that. All right, I want to do red cards. Let's do it. It's time for that time. It's our weekly game, America's favorite game. It's called Red Card, Yellow Card with Mark Ingram. We got it. We ready to go? Do we have the red cards? And the yellow? I, I don't <laughs> have it. I don't have it this week. No I don't red, know what's no going on. I literally, what's going on? That's a red card. That's a red that's card a red on Brian card. Barton over here. He had that's one, a red one card thing. Okay, he got man. one thing. All right, let's do it. All right, let's t- let's take a look at it. This look, red card for throwing your boy under the bus. I know, that's yeah, that, that's true. All right, we're gonna show you footage. You give me, you give me what you think. This week we're gonna start with this high school game. This is oh Louisiana. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, talk about that's tough a red love, card. Tough love from your teammates. What do you got? That's a red. Oh, I mean, oh. my dog, like, he knows oh. he jumped off sides. He didn't mean to do it. Obviously, he was indisciplined in the moment, but you don't have to just smack the whole back of his head like that. That's one. That's two. Pow. Back to back. Slap in the back of the head. Red cards on both the teammates. Goodness gracious. Red card on both the teammates. Red card. I mean. Hey, in the clutch. There we the go. Clutch, Brian Barrett. He's got, what, what, what kind of 40 do you run? Brian, that was fast. Hey. Hey, we, we we handing out two red cards, man. They got to play with nine people now. They got to play with nine people now. You're not wrong. All right, let's keep it going here. On to the college ranks here. Frustrated with yourself is one thing, right? This, though, I want to show you. Can we, can we scroll, please? I appreciate it. Thank you. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. What do you make of this? I don't even know what led to this, but the helmet to the... To the ju- the helmet to the dome has got to stop, man. We got to protect the brain, we got to protect the mentals, and we got to protect the chicken. Red card, my friend. Protect your mentals, protect your chicken. You know what I mean? Just like my boy Marshawn said, man. Let's, that's a red card. Let's play it again and look at that, like the whole sideline. The whole, the whole sideline. Like, the whole bed, like, they're like, ooh. Wait, wait, wait. Like, come on. Ooh. I like, oh. Yeah, they're like, ooh. Hey. Yikes. Everywhere. Hey. Uh, okay, so it seems like the sideline was a dangerous place this weekend. You got to keep your head on a swivel. Take a look gotta at this. Got to keep your head on a swivel. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Bomb. Oh, my goodness. He lucky he ain't get knocked out for real. Look. Bomb. That's a chin check. But come on, man. Look. See. Ooh. 
That's that's Roger Carter Jr. He's a rookie tight end. What? what how, how did this happen? It looks like he was supposed to be on the field and he's not on the field, so he's rushing to get on the field. That's what it looks like. I don't know the scenario. I don't know the situation. But just from me evaluating the film, it looks like he was supposed to be on the field and he wasn't on the field. So he's rushing to get on the field, doesn't know where he's at, putting the helmet on, and bomb. You chin check your head coach. So if you if that happened to Sean Payton, is that kid getting cut? He would be on the high seat for sure. <laughs> hey, Are we giving him but, a red um, card? Just from my evaluation of the situation, I don't know if it's accurate. I'm just evaluating the film as course, I see it. Of course. It's a red card. It's a red Unaware card. Unaware that you're supposed to be on the field. Knock your head, coach, block off, red card. <laughs> you can't give him a yellow card for that. You just you can't. can't. I mean, my dog <laughs> almost went to sleep, man. Like, UFC style. Like, chin check them. He, but hey, Sean McVay don't got a glass jaw. So. I know. It's very yeah, impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was yep, running, he yep. ran a 40 like two, two uh, plays later. All right. Uh, I understand running backs take some of the hardest punishment, and it is only fair to reciprocate. But I do feel like you might think, think this might be a, a little much, a little disrespectful. Look at this. P. Ryan? Yep. Oh! Yep. Your thoughts. That's how you do it. It's a, it's a, get off it's me. A, it's a stiff arm. Did that deserve not a yellow? Get off me. He went off in this game, and I did love to get see it. Get off no me. No Joe Mixon. Do you Wait. see it the slow motion? No, tell me again. Accuracy. Show me again. The accuracy, it's his beauty. Catch the screen. Get off me. Finish the run. Take six, seven of y'all to get me out of bounds. This ain't no card. This is a running back doing running back thing. This is appreciation. This is admiration. <laughs> this is love for the RBs. Oh, get off of me. <laughs> the RB have, love. We have to find something that an RB could do on the field that, or any in any form of life that Mark would actually like flag for anything. Mark's like, nope, running back, great. Nope, nope, no nope, problem. Hey, it's a, it's, a, it's a red card on me to hate on the RB. <laughs> That's fair. It's a, it's a yellow card on me to wish ill on the RB. Yeah. It's the RB love all day. And we loved seeing it, him stepping in. It's all about opportunities in the NFL, and he got that with Joe Mixon being out, and they've got a big game against the Chiefs this yeah. week. He had a big game, and he was ready for his opportunity. It's all about being ready for when your number is called, and he did that. And then, P-Ron, get off hold me! It down for the RB. Huh? Get off me! Yeah. <laughs> get off of me! Get off of me! Guy like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Jags. Oh, my God. The Jags beat the Ravens. It was a very dramatic game. But all anyone is talking about is this. I don't know if you saw. Now, what is that? What is he wearing? Jackson DeVille. Go USA. Oh. Oh. Mark. Mark's quiet. Now, we lost Mark. Well, I have no comments on this. That won't get me in the HR in the HR office. I think he's coming back. I'm crying because he's so funny. Get off me! Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark's gonna get a yellow card for bad Wi-Fi. Mark Ingram, pay your bills, buddy. Pay your bills, you Ingram. Me? Hey, that's a red card. That's a red card. See, I'm gonna throw my boy under the bus. That was my center, Cesar Ruiz, calling my phone knowing that I'm on the Up and Adam show. That's a red card for him. That's a red card for me. But hey, let's continue. Let's you continue. Told me, you told me, it's called Do Not Disturb, first of all, my friend. Number two. Red card. I brought up something about Teron Armstead, and you said to me a couple weeks ago, you're not talking about my offensive line, Kay. So I, don't, I can't, you can, I understand it. Uh, here's a bonus one for you. Mark, have you ever eaten a kiwi before, the fruit kiwi? A kiwi? Yeah. I've had a kiwi flavored candy. Okay. Okay, weird. Have you ever, but you know what a kiwi yeah, Come on, kiwi, right? So, I know what a kiwi is. Okay, I know great. what a kiwi is. So, uh, our producer, the one with the bad haircut that got the, you know, and then I shaved his head. This is, we're in the meeting yesterday, and this is how he eats a kiwi, like a crazy person. He bites into it. <laughs> tell me, tell me what do you think about this. I think he's a sociopath. Why are you always on my guy, man? <laughs> like, leave him alone. Like, let him eat his kiwi. <laughs> Let him get his cut. Like, just let my man Conrad live. 
Let my man Conrad live. They're all laughing. How do you eat a kiwi, Kay? Show us how you eat a kiwi. I would peel it with a peel, like a potato peeler. I'm not kidding. So he eats it like an apple? Yeah, and I would cut it, I would slice it up, and then i put it with, you know, like, I, I, what kind of kiwi candy are you eating? Um, what are they called? The high chews. The high chews. <laughs> high chews are so legit. Why do people sleep on high chews? This is good. Bro, the high chews be slapping. So good. They sleep, but they got the kiwi high chews, so that's how I had the kiwi candy flavor. You feel me? Yeah, this isn't great. Listen, we love you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for coming. I'm a pineapple, back. watermelon, strawberry okay. type of guy. The kiwi is all right. But the kiwi high chew is slapping, though. The kiwi high chew is slapping. What, what was it? Get off Get me! Get off of me! Hey. Get off me! All right, you're the best, Mark. Good luck against Tampa Bay. Tell Jameis we say hi. I will, I hi, will, Jameis. I will, okay? I'm it is time for Hit the Lights. What is that? Well, we like to highlight performances that stuck out and deserve some spotlight. We hit the lights. We turn them on and put them on different players and coaches and performances. And this week, that honor goes to Sam Darnold. You love to see it. He got his first start since January. I've always been a big fan, big supporter. He beat Russell Wilson in the Broncos 23-10 to pick up his first win since Halloween. Unbelievable. He personally, 11 of 19, 164 yards. He threw a touchdown pass of beauty to one of my favorite receivers, DJ Moore. Uh, and then he did this barrel roll for a score that, let's just be honest here, Peppy from Star Fox would be proud of this. So with all that Darnold has already been through in his career, I could not love this for him more. Come back, be one of the best defenses in this entire game uh, and get his team a win and who knows maybe he'll even have a chance to earn himself a job a better situation whether that's in Carolina or somewhere else down the stretch this season so Sam Darnold we see you and we're big fans so good luck and congrats to you on the win all right we've got uh, a couple seconds here. We have a big show tomorrow. Naeem Hines will join us. We also will have the NFC side of things as far as the playoff picture and the Coachella Music Festival. But Naeem Hines um, is the spokesperson for Muscular Dystrophy Association. It is a cause that is near and dear to my heart. You, I know yesterday was Giving Tuesday, but you can hit this QR code um, right here and give what you can. Uh, there's a lot of hope and optimism around neuromuscular diseases uh, that there is a cure coming. There is a way to live with this. Naeem Hines it runs in his family. His grandmother passed away. His mother currently has it. Uh, and so he'll share his insights on this, of course. But if you can make a difference, um, this is the only thing that could possibly get me to run a marathon, which I did uh, in its name to donate money. So uh, do that. We will have Naeem Hines for you Bills fans ahead of Bills Patriots on Thursday night. Football, 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 football.